Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be talking you through my best and worst luxury purchases. I don't think I've done this video in a very long time. I usually do quite regular updates of these on my channel and I actually think my last one I believe was pre covid pandemic so now that in the uk things have really like eased up and i've started getting a bit more wear out of my wardrobe and especially out of my bags and like luxury goods i feel like it is time to do an update i've actually been using things a lot more and i've really got the wear out of some things and not got the wear out of others and i can really see what has been a great addition to my wardrobe and what has not sadly. I've actually just had a really big purge of everything in my wardrobe, like all of my accessories, which I tend to go through like the bulk of the wardrobe, like my actual clothes quite regularly but i don't do this so much with accessories normally kind of once every couple of years and i've just been really really on it recently because there's just been so much that hasn't been worn which is sad but also great for this video because it's given me a really good insight into what really were my worst purchases because i have started to or am selling most of them not all of them though don't get too excited by some of the things in this video that i'm going to talk about so i'm going to alternate from best to worst throughout this video as much as possible i actually went through the last video and and I'm pleased to report that there are like minimal changes to the opinions of items in my wardrobe, which is great. I was like expecting to go through it and be like, oh no, I actually love that bag now. Or, oh, actually, no, like I hate that bag now. But actually I stand by the majority, I think, of things I said, I skimmed. So there might be something that I've missed. But I thought I'd get started with a purchase that I talked about in the last video. And this was very new to my wardrobe then. And I said in that video that I will only mention more recent purchases if I feel like they've got an exceptional amount of wear. So like if I bought something in the the past few months i'm only going to talk about it if it's had an exceptional amount of wear and this at the time actually had had an exceptional amount of wear i am pleased to report that it continued to get an exceptional amount of wear considering i haven't traveled in like two years outside of the country so a month or so after releasing that video i wasn't sure if i'd continue to get the wear out of this but i actually have it's great for if you're staying at someone's house if you are going up to london and you need to carry quite a few bits like this fits my laptop in it it can fit like a couple of makeup bags i use it a lot or if I'm doing overnight stays. Sometimes I pack a small suitcase and then my makeup and like laptop and all of that in here. I have had an exceptional amount of wear of this bag and I'm really pleased because it's not cheap for a fabric tote bag. Has it worn well? Probably not. I'm really, I'd, I'd try not to look at the handles on this because that's where the bulk of the uh, dirt kind of ends up. I try not to look. It's kept its shape super, super well. I'm very happy with it. I always try and keep it like well structured. These have actually risen in price dramatically since I bought mine, which is a great thing, but not a great thing if you don't already own one. If you're looking to resell one, amazing. But I actually can't see myself reselling this really at any point. Yeah, I think it's one of those pieces that is just so gorgeous that I think I'll keep it to have throughout my life and it'll just be one of those things where it's like, oh, this vintage bag. But yeah, I thought I would start by updating you all on this one and how I feel about it now. A year later it's definitely been a great addition into my wardrobe but i also have to give a special mention to my saint laurent reeve gauche which is the other tote that i own there was a prada one i think that i mentioned in my last best and worst video and i have actually sold that that's gone to a lovely new home but i have to give a special shout out to my saint laurent reeve gauche which is beaten up but has really stood the test of time in terms of like its durability its canvas it's very easy to wipe clean which is amazing given it's a light color it fits so much in it i don't get all year round wear out of it because it is much more of a summer bag but i have to give a special mention to it because for the price point for the durability and the amount that it holds i do think it's also a fantastic tote bag and has definitely been an amazing purchase in my wardrobe i bought that at the same time that i bought a little ysl belt bag which was one of the stupidest additions into my wardrobe and I think I sold that last summer. So quite a contrast in one order how one of the purchases was like amazing and one of them was not so amazing. Sadly, one that was not a great addition to my summer wardrobe, which I really thought it would be is this bag. This is a YSL Sac Du Jour. I bought two of these in one go. Probably my stupidest and boldest move to date. This, as of last night, now has a new home to go to so i've had to film this video super quick this morning because it needs to be packaged up and shipped on out to its new owner this is a ysl sac de jour in the small size to be honest i thought i would get so much wear out of this you guys will know if you're subscribed to my channel i love a neutral however the neutral tone that this is in just does not go with anything in my wardrobe i actually need more of a blush neutral in hindsight and this has been a very expensive lesson to learn but 
a lesson nonetheless. I still love the style of these. I absolutely adore it. I actually would love a bigger one in black. They're very structured. They're very classic. I really do feel like if I had a black version of this, it would sit in my wardrobe for years and years and years and I would wear it on repeat. The one thing I found is a lot of my black bags do, although they don't like, if they're more of a trend style, they don't always wow me. They do stand the test of time in my wardrobe and I go back to them because they're so versatile and such a classic, whereas it's the colors and the patterns that can be a bit more hit and miss. However, that being said, I bought this, like I said, in a two with a bright mustard yellow. And that was the one that I was so unsure on. I thought it was gonna be a huge mistake. I love it. It has been an exceptional addition to my wardrobe. It looks great with an all black outfit. It looks great in the summer with like pretty dresses, like no matter what the color, it just seems to like go. Whereas this one just didn't. Throughout every outfit, it just didn't have that same wow factor and I didn't reach for it. So I'm very strict now with the items in my wardrobe and if I don't get enough wear of them, they do need to go to a new home and this is sadly one of them. And it has also reinforced my belief that I just shouldn't be buying things in twos. Even if I have a bag and I wear it over and over and over again, I shouldn't be buying it in a second color unless it's like a Chanel classic flap in a different color because they retain their value much better. And even if I don't get so much wear, they hold their value, they resell really well. So I would say that is an exception to my rule, but that is the new rule is no more things in doubles because if you have watched my channel for a long time, you will know that I do that a lot. And it is one of the worst mistakes I've ever made in terms of luxury purchases. It's just not necessary. So sadly, this is a worst purchase that is going to a new home, but I'm very happy that it's going to a new home because I don't like things sitting in my wardrobe being unloved. It's just so pointless. This next purchase is one that I thought was going to be a mistake. I thought it was gonna be a worst purchase and I was gonna have to do one of these videos in the future and really sadly talk about this bag because for the first six months that I owned this bag, I didn't wear it. I didn't feel like it went with anything that I was wearing. However, we were like peak lockdown in the UK. I think the first four months that I owned this, I was going out on like one walk a day and then really not doing much else. So at that time, this bag really didn't have a place in my wardrobe. However, after I was released back into the world, this bag became my go-to. I guess during lockdown, I have been really favoring like my little tiny Fendi camera bag because I really didn't need anything that wasn't my phone and my keys. However, once I started needing a bag that could carry a few more bits, this bag, became an absolute treasure in my wardrobe. I use this daily, like it is my most reached for bag, I would say of the past nine months. I absolutely adore it. I love the style of it. I love the top handle. I love the long strap. I wear it crossbody, but I tend to prefer it like slung over my shoulder, like a true kind of like satchel messenger bag type style. It's got pockets on the back, which I find so, so useful. It's got two pockets on the inside. It's actually got three. It's got one here as well, which I find super handy as well. I always keep a mask now in that back one. And then we've got a big space in the middle separated by a divider. It has a little clasp closure, which sometimes can get a bit fiddly if you're trying to open it one handed, but it's really not too bad at all. It is in a grained leather. And it's obviously like a really special pochette Matisse to me. This is, by the way, the Louis Vuitton pochette Matisse. This is in the reverse monogram. It is stunning. I absolutely love it. I prefer it so much to the classic all dark brown. And I think this little bit of tan has really helped it blend so seamlessly into my wardrobe and makes it a very good like summer and winter bag. I just think it is so cute. I love the Louis Vuitton monogramming. It's just like such an iconic print. Growing up, obviously the speedies were everything and they had this same print on them and i grew up like really loving that look i would still love to be honest i would love a vintage speedy just for just for the vibes because that was my dream bag when i was like 13 years old but yeah this has become an invaluable item in my wardrobe i just find it so easy to use i absolutely adore it it's such a great bag for so many different occasions obviously not dressy occasions but on an everyday basis this does so well for me. However, I do need to finally bite the bullet and peel this plastic off because I've tried, really tried to keep it on for as long as possible to keep it looking as neat as possible. But yeah, I've absolutely loved this one. And if I'm honest, it really surprised me because when I first bought it, I loved it, but then just wasn't using it. And I was like, have I made the biggest mistake ever? The answer is no, thank goodness. I'm gonna move on to a worst purchase that is not a bag because there are the occasional non-bag items in this video. This is a worst, but it's actually more of a, I would not recommend 
than anything else. I don't hate this item. I don't regret buying it because I bought it for a specific shoot. It served its purpose. I'm really happy with it. However, people ask me about these shoes a lot and I have to say like, no, I absolutely do not recommend these shoes. These shoes are gorgeous. So this is a pair of Jimmy Choo shoes. I can't remember what they're called. They are absolutely stunning. They've got this like gorgeous, I'm gonna say a satin, it's a pink fuchsia satin. It's really, really beautiful. They've got a bow on the back of one and a bow on the front of the other, which is a complete and utter health and safety nightmare. I know so many people that are picking these shoes as their wedding shoes and I am concerned for every, like there's so many influencers I know that have bought these and they're like, these are going to be my wedding shoes. And I'm like, I'm concerned for you, honey. I would not be able, I would not have these as my wedding shoes. I would maybe wear these to an event where I didn't have to walk very far. Like if there was a car taking me to the door and then I had to go into a room and sit down for a dinner and then go back to the door, get in a car. I would may I would chance that. However, walking down the aisle, no. This front bow is the biggest health and safety hazard of life. So basically you have your two feet and your toes on this feet can actually, my big toe gets caught in the bow. So the bows are like loops. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you see those loops? Your toe can get stuck in those. I would not be risking that walking down the aisle. So to everyone that says, I'm considering these as my wedding shoe, I'm just putting it out there. Maybe I'm just really clumsy, but I'm not known for being a clumsy person. I walk in heels. I'm very, I can very confidently walk in heels. These, however, I'm just not sure. I keep putting them the wrong way around. I'm not sure, you guys. They're beautiful. They are so, so beautiful. I have a matching bag that goes with them and it's so gorgeous. And I just think they are the most fun shoe. I also have a pink dress that matches these as well. And that could be a real vibe altogether. But I actually don't know if I would confidently wear these like on a night out or any night out where I'm like moving more than a few meters at a time. Because if I were drinking, like I would not, I would never. So yeah, they're not the most expensive Jimmy Choo's to ever exist by any means. But in terms of the fact that I know I won't wear them out over and over and over again, compared to other designer heels that I own, they were not a best purchase. In terms of like the purpose that I originally bought them for, they're fab and I'm very, very happy with the result of the shoot that I got them for. Yeah, I would love to know if anyone else has found the same. If any of you are having them as like your wedding shoe or just own them and you find them fine, like I wanna I wanna hear from everyone. Like, am I, am I alone and am I just crazy and am I just being really precious or are these like slightly risky to walk in let me know i have a hot water bottle on my lap today and you know when you do something you're like why why have i never done this before this is this is incredible this is genius that's how i feel right now next we have an item that i bought more recently which has had an exceptional amount of wear these are the fendi monogram boots I absolutely love them. These have been such a great addition to my wardrobe. They've served me so well throughout the winter, but I can still see them working really, really well going through to spring, especially in the transitional season. Like I wore these so much in the autumn with like jumper dresses and things like that. These are such a great item to have in my wardrobe for the transitional season. I just love them. They're really, really comfortable. I went, what did I go? Half a size down? I was advised to go half a size down. I went for my normal size because I wanted to be able to have like thicker socks on with these and they fit me really well, but lots of people have said that it is advisable to go half a size down with them. I absolutely love them and I love them so much that, did I buy a second pair? Yes, yes I did, but the second pair are all black, which I'm also finding is a great addition to my wardrobe. But these have been the standout for me and they are the ones that I do reach for again and again and again. Will I love them forever with this monogramming? Not so sure. And that's why I bought the black pair because the black pair are just a lot more classic and I knew would stand the test of time. But these have been a favorite in my wardrobe and in terms of cost per wear, they are doing so well. Just in terms of Fendi boots in general, I can't recommend them enough. They are such a statement, but also such a comfortable classic at the same time. They also hit at a really good point on the leg. I think they're about 20, 21, 22 centimeters high. And most boots come to, I think it's 20, 20, 20 centimeters which on my leg just is not the most flattering height and they're also normally a lot chunkier as well and that I really struggle with because I find that's really unflattering on my figure I am shorter so I just think when you find a pair of boots that elongate your legs you've got to go for them and these ones have been so flattering on my leg especially because they are lace up so I can do them up really tight to my leg and they're nice and snug and it really streamlines the silhouette they also aren't particularly thick as well being canvas at the top so I do find they're very non-chunky 
key which is amazing and I love them I love them so much I'm gonna do a couple of best purchases in terms of accessories now first up being my YSL cat eye sunnies I absolutely love these they're very similar to the Celine ones that everyone had a few years ago and then I think Celine discontinued them but then YSL started doing this very similar pair which is amazing I believe Hailey Bieber wears a pair like this a lot I think they might be the Celine ones but if you're looking for a dupe of these and other stories does the best dupe of these that I've ever seen hopefully they're still in stock if they are I will link to them they're very like minimal on almost like a little bit matrixy but they just are super super cute and I got so much wear out of them last summer along with my Celine Tilda sunglasses I really enjoyed wearing those again as well and those were a pair that I bought years and years and years ago and I do return to wearing every so often so those have been a great purchase in my wardrobe but in terms of a more recent style that are slight just slightly less classic these have been so great I really really enjoy wearing these I think especially if you're power dressing these are just the perfect pair of sunglasses to add that so those have been an absolutely fantastic purchase i've absolutely loved them and i haven't really bought i'm taking my earring out i'll explain why in a second i haven't really bought any other sunglasses since i bought these i'm really really happy with them i think that's the sign of a like outstanding purchase for me is when i feel super satisfied and like yeah i'm done here i'm done here the collection is complete another good purchase that isn't a designer bag are these earrings i love fendi can you tell i just i really do love fendi these are some little fendi hoop earrings they have the f in them and they're just so cute and they're very like simple and clean and i really like them i think these are around 250 pounds which is very expensive for like what is essentially like costume jewelry however they have worn so well they haven't tarnished i believe i'm very happy with the, like the condition of them still yeah they still look good as new obviously i don't really get my jewelry like wet but they're in such good condition like the gold plating on them hasn't worn away at all i think it's gold plated i've been so happy with them i just i love how they look they're super simple they're classic but they're not classic if that makes sense they're like classic with a little twist i wear them literally all the time and i got them about a year ago now and i wear them at least like three times a week and i'm a big jewelry person i like to switch up my jewelry but i really do reach for them so so regularly they're just one of those like really easy everyday pieces that i have in my jewelry collection that i just reach for again and again and again they work really well with lots of different jewelry combinations so if i'm wearing something more simple like this it works really well but if i'm wearing something that's a bit chunkier as well and a bit more modern they still work really really well so in that sense i'm really happy with them my other hoops are from monica Benida, and i also love those back to bags this purchase i wasn't sure on at first i was like oh god this could get really beaten up really really quickly i bought this june july time last year i have absolutely loved wearing this bag to the point where i'm resisting buying other ysl cassandra bags that's the style by the way i'm not going to be buying another one in a different color i'm i'm sticking to my rule it's not happening but i've been so so happy with this bag i love the mix of like the black smooth leather and then the raffia rattan style bag these flew out of stock as well so i think this is one of those ones that will remain being a sought after item for quite a while so it's one that i do feel will resell really well as well which always makes me really happy but yeah i am so happy with like how it's worn it's really not too scratched at all considering it is like a smooth leather on the back it holds an amazing amount of stuff as well for the fact that it doesn't look too big but it's got like quite a bit of space on the inside oh it's in there got quite a bit of space on the inside it's got a divider in the middle back pocket which i love the clasp's a little bit fiddly but i do think the way it pops open like you move the l and then it flips up is like a work of art i absolutely love that i love the design of this bag it's so fun it's so classic it's a really really great summer bag so although not one that i am getting like daily wear out of i'm super super happy with it as a summer bag because there just wasn't really an outfit that this didn't go with last summer especially as i'm moving into a wardrobe that has more like basics and more classic items that i then just kind of top up with trend pieces this works really really well in the summer with a very simple outfit i wear lots of black lots of white lots of neutrals it works really well with all of those it works well with your denims like it just works and it's also one of those bags that works great as a day to night bag in the summer as well which is amazing so i've been super happy with this purchase and every time i look at it i'm still like yes love that so much which i think is always a good sign as well when you're not using it if you still look at it and you're like oh so cute okay we need to talk about this i'm very sad about this but actually i bought this when did i buy this october 2020 and i've worn it so few times i can count it 
I think on, I'm going to say two hands, but it could well be one hand, but I don't want to be super over dramatic about it. The Givenchy Antigona Mini, is this the Mini? Yeah, the Mini in white. I just sadly have not got the wear out of. I also had the Mini in croc as well, which is currently on its way to its new home. I also sold that one. I basically just found that the Givenchy Antigona is in the smaller sizes. I wasn't reaching for them. There were other bags in my wardrobe that did the same job held the same amount but they did it in a better less clunky way i didn't love the strap on these the way they ch they've changed the way the straps are on the antigonas now so when the long strap clips into this bit it can easily like slide back out and it's so annoying whereas it didn't always used to be that way i don't know why they do it like that they should change it to a clip it would make your life so much easier but yeah very sadly i have not got the wear out of this one i didn't get the wear really out of the croc one either when i first got the croc one i was wearing it all the time and then that use dwindled off like i said i think i have bags that fit the same amount in that just do it better however i am keeping my black one which is in the smooth leather with silver detailing on it the black ones are much bigger i've got it in the small size which i don't know why they don't have a large so i don't know why they don't do like large medium small instead of medium small mini nano like why don't know anyway i'm keeping my small one which fits a lot more in it i also think that it because it's in the black it's just a classic and i think one that i might start reaching for again in the future but this i just haven't reached for at all and i feel like that sports luxe style i'm starting to like grow out of and this is the thing when we talk about luxury investments and like oh repeat wear and all of that like i really genuinely feel like the only things that i have got repeat wear of have been real real classics rather than like trend pieces though saying that the antigona is a classic it's just i don't feel like it's my style anymore like i'm selling my little balenciaga bag which is almost like a bowling style bag in mini and it's a very similar like sports luxe vibe to this i just feel like that is a period of my life that i am growing out of i think i bought this when i was like right on the edge of like leaving that love behind so this one really has had like minimal wear however once again today it is now going to be on its way to its new home so that's great just so nice to know that they are going to be going to a home where they'll be worn and loved and used but these i would actually note do not have the best resale i have found the ysl sack de drawers actually have much better resale i found i don't know if it's because they are a more like very simple classic style but i found pre-loved they're selling at a much better rate than the Givenchy antigonas for example so in terms of all of the worst purchases i think this is probably my absolute worst this next purchase may have gone in a worst before i actually haven't watched them all through and i know i've probably talked about this bag before because i've had it for years i think i purchased it in like 2016 or 2017 let's say 2017 this is the balenciaga city in the suede with the bright gold like very yellow gold hardware and this has been one of those items that sometimes i wear it and i wear it on repeat and i'm obsessed with it and then sometimes i'm like no this is a really stupid purchase i'm gonna put it out there this has been one of the best bag purchases because though i don't wear it all the time like every single day of every single month i come back to it i come back to it regularly and it's one that i'm like i will never sell this i will just never sell this it's one of the most requested for me to sell and maybe that keeps me liking it i don't know but it's one of my most requested to sell i think i believe kim kardashian had it years ago so it's like sought after not even just by you guys and though it's not the most sensible material in the suede it's just such a great bag it fits a lot in it it looks amazing as part of an all black outfit i actually love the slouchiness of it rumor has it these are making a comeback i'm not sure I'm not sure, but I've actually started wearing it again recently and I absolutely love using it. And the relationship I have with this bag is how I would like the relationship with all my bags to be, where it's like, obviously I have a few, so not the same one gets worn every single day. I don't just use one every day, but I want to be able to have bags that are almost like classic and timeless enough that I keep coming back to them. So yeah, this for me has been a great purchase in that it just keeps on giving. My love for it might not always be super consistent, but I always come back to it again and again. But yeah, I think for me, it has been a really great purchase in that sense that, you know, we are how many years later? Like five? five years on and i'm still reaching for it i think that is the sign of a great purchase it's difficult with these videos isn't it like how do you define what a best and worst purchase is for me i think in terms of not getting the wear and then not getting the resale that's got to be like your worst case scenario but yeah this one for me is still being worn five years on i am very very happy about that but that is going to be it for my best and worst purchases of 2022 i did i say 2021 at the beginning of this 
well i guess we're talking about 2021 but filming this in 2022 but yeah that's going to be it for my best and worst purchases of the past couple of years 2020 2021 2022 i hope i've covered everything i know i've sold a few little bits so there are some things that have already gone and maybe i haven't really thought about them there are some things as well that weren't like worst and weren't best there are lots and lots of purchases in my wardrobe that I just don't feel really fit into either. There's a lot of middle ground, I think, in my wardrobe. And over time, sometimes one becomes a best purchase or it becomes a worst purchase, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer to have them in a category and sometimes they never fit in a category. But yeah, I hope you guys are all having the best day and I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Love you, bye.